All right, let's pray. Father, we just love you, Lord. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. Father, in this unique and unusual circumstance, Holy Spirit, bless and anoint this time. Bless and anoint your word. Bless and anoint your people in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, turn with me in your Bibles. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 10, Ephesians 6. Amen. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the power of His might. Amen. The Bible says to be strong in the power of the Lord and His might. <clears throat> it's an interesting time that we're living in right now with all that's going on with the coronavirus. It's everywhere you look in the news is talking about the coronavirus. There's a lot of panic that's associated with it. Some of it, you know, you agree or you don't agree. But the interesting thing is God is still in control. God is still on his throne. Everything that we go through, we go through for a purpose. Amen. Now, the Bible said, finally, brethren, it starts out finally. So for some of us, maybe this is what it took for us to be to our finally. So our finally, it says, be strong in the power of his might. Well, in being strong in the power of his might means to be rooted and grounded in the word. And being rooted and grounded in the word means that we've got enough word in us that it has now prepared us for the time that we're in now. You see, it's not an easy time on a lot of different levels. There are some of us going through some economic hardships, some going through some social hardship. And, and some of us, you know, we're tired of being cooped up and being at home. And, and uh, some of you, you know, you're married to, well, we just won't go there. Amen. But you're ready for some of you to leave home. Amen. But the Bible says, be strong in the power of his might. And being strong in his might. Now, listen, this is the key that we teach on all the time is the word. The word needs to be such a part of you and in you. That when you need the word, the word is what flows through you. Amen. And so where we are now is we need the word. You see, we listen to the news and what they're telling us on the news, and it's not very encouraging. And so if we're not careful, we'll get caught up in the atmosphere and the environment that we're living in, and we lose sight of the fact that God is still in control. The last Sunday when we were here, I preached on fear and not being fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. And through times like this, we really need to rely on the experiences that we've had in the past that's brought us through the struggles that brought us to where we are. You see, this is new and unique in one level, but there are no new and unique trials or tribulations to the Lord. Everything that we experience, everything that we go through, God has already given us all the preparation that we need in his word. Amen. And so what we need to learn to rely on is not CBS, NBC, CNN, ESPN, PPN, WXYZN, or any of the other N's and X's and O's. Amen. We need to get back to the basics, back to the word back to what the Bible says. You see, my Bible says that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's what my Bible says. My Bible says that all things work together for the good, for those that are called. Amen. My, you see what I'm saying? My Bible, what does your Bible say? It's time we start quoting the Word. It's time we started living up to what the Word said. My best advice and recommendation to you in this time at the moment is Turn the news off. Turn the news off. Stop listening to the news 24-7 and trying to make sure you got the latest numbers. Oh, we're up to 100,000 cases. We're up to this. No, we're up to where we're supposed to be according to the plan that God's orchestrated that we just don't understand. And so let's live by and be called according to his purpose. You see, now is the golden opportunity for the church to step to the forefront of things that are going on and start loving on people as best you can, but maintaining your six-foot social distance. 
you know, my wife went to the, to the store uh, today to Best Buy, and uh, she got a, a kick out of that because Best Buy is kind of like Sonic right now. It's like the IHOP. They roller skate out to your car. Well, they don't roller skate, but they run out to your car, and you tell them what you want, and they run back in. You know, that's kind of cool. My wife really liked that. She's kind of hoping that they'll keep that even once things move on to the next level or whatever that might be. All right. Being strong in the power of his might. Amen. You see, my Bible says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or its seed begging bread. My Bible says that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So in these trying and difficult times, it's a great opportunity for us to live up to what the word says. You see, now is the time for the church to lead in the areas of peace. Now's the time for the church to lead in the areas of, hey, listen, it's really not that bad. You, you know, it's really going to be okay. We're going to make this through. We're going to be better on the other side. You see, a lot of us are, are, are have this unique ability and opportunity now to realize what's really important in life. Hmm. What really matters, what your priorities really should be, amen? You know, I, I saw a thing the other day. It said uh, uh, violent crimes down 90% and uh, uh, burglaries down. Uh, it was something like 85, 95%, but it said that uh, domestic disputes up 120%. <laughs> We got men and women, husbands and wives, forced to stay together at times, and, and uh, we're having some challenges. Let's get back to the Word. Let's get back to what the Bible says. And let's remember, let's remember this next verse. It says, Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the wiles of the devil. Now listen to me. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. Now it says of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You see, <clears throat> right now what we're struggling and dealing with, this invisible enemy, this virus, this is an attack of Satan. This attack is coming against our nation. It's coming against the world. It's coming against the church. This is an attack. And so the Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So in, in this area, we don't wrestle against our rulers. We don't wrestle against the authority. What we're wrestling against is a virus. Well, how do you fight a virus? Well, they're trying to help us out in different ways. But the best way to fight the virus is on your knees. The best way for us to get ahead of what's going on is to get on our knees. The Bible says that if my people, if my people will call on me, if they will change from their wicked ways, if they'll humble themselves and pray, then God says that he will heal our lands. Now, we need some healing in our land. You see, <clears throat> there's been a lot of things going on in the last, There's been a lot of things that are going on in the last few years that r r really put a black eye on our nation, that, that, that uh, r really do different things, that, that as a church, you know, we, mm, what we need to do is make sure, church, make sure that we're honoring what the Word says. What we need to do is make sure that we're living up to what Jesus expected us to be. He said, you'll know my disciples by their love. That's what he said. So in these trying times, what we really need to remember and focus is the love of Jesus and understanding that, listen, this is not an enemy that we need to fight in the natural. This is an enemy that we need to fight in the supernatural. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers of darkness, Amen. And so let's fight this enemy enemy in a sense of unity in prayer. 
let's come against this the way that Christians should fight our fight. Our fight is fought in prayer. Amen? And how we do that is we keep moving forward. It says, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heaven, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand. Amen? Stand. Church, it's time to take a stand. To stand and to say that Jesus is the Lord of my life. It's time to take a stand and to say, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. It's time to take a stand and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's time that we take a stand. It's time that we take a stand and understand that the word works if we work the word. It's time that we take a stand and we understand that I need to make my life change to fit the teaching of the gospel and not try to make the gospel fit my life. It's time to understand that God has a purpose and a plan for me and I need to get in line with what his purpose and plan is and stop trying to tell God what his plan is for my life and live my plan under the assumption that it's his plan. It's time, church, to take the word for what it says and believe what it says and to move forward. Amen? It says, having done all to stand, stand, having put on, having girded your waist with truth. Girded your waist with truth. <clears throat> the truth is the truth of the gospel. When, when Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, his response always was, it is written. It is written. You see, that's what we need to do and take the stand today. Gird yourself with the truth. The truth of the word. The truth of the word is Psalms 91. Mm, Psalms 91. You see, the Bible says that he who dwells, in the secret place of the Most High God. You see, where are you dwelling today? If we're not careful, we're going to get so caught up dwelling in the environment that they've created in the news that we, get, we keep allowing the news to pull us out of our secret place. And when it pulls you out of your secret place, it's pulling you into a place of fear and a place of doubt. You see, in the secret place is a place of faith. In the secret place is a place of peace. In the secret place is a place where you commune with the Father. And it starts by understanding and girding yourself with the truth, the truth of the Word. You see, the Bible is the absolute truth. The Word works. Circumstance always changes. Amen? You see, today we're dealing with this pandemic called COVID-19, the coronavirus. But see, this is just a circumstance that changes. And so let's not lose sight of the truth in the midst of the circumstance. The truth will still be here once the circumstance changes. You see, it says, in having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, Righteousness means right living. Righteousness, right living. The Bible says that his righteousness, my righteousness is from Jesus. Amen. But in this, the breastplate of righteousness is right living. You see, and in right living, it's when we get girded with the truth. The right living is the application of the truth that we now have. So what we need to make sure that we're doing and understanding is that once you've once you've heard the message, once you've received the truth, now we need to make change. We need to change in order for our life to shine the gospel, in order for the truth to show through us. But we have this innate ability to try to make truth change to fit our circumstance. It's interesting when people do something that they shouldn't do, or, or things that are going on, how they'll, they'll twist the truth just enough so they don't look quite as bad. You know, have you ever had, you know, your children, when you've caught them doing something that they shouldn't do, and they start double talking to you about where they were and what they were doing, and they, they say a whole bunch of nothing, 
you know, all at once. And, uh, and when, when, they, when they get all finished, they really haven't said anything. See, church, if we're not careful, we're the same way. We say a whole lot of nothing when we need to be speaking the truth of the word. Amen. The truth of the word. You, you, you know, the, the truth is extremely important. My, my oldest daughter, Cheyenne, when, uh, when she was younger, she, uh, she, she came to her mom and me, and she told us a lie. I can't even tell you what the lie was now, to be honest with you. She was about four years old at the time. And she came to us and uh, told us a lie, something about what she had did. And, and uh, so we're, we're discussing it with her. And her mom and I knew exactly she did it. She was the only child at the time. So she was the only one in the house. I mean, Jeanette knew she didn't do it. I knew I didn't do it. It had to be her. Amen. So those of you parents with only one kid, that's really not fair. You need two or three of them. So you can try to get to the root of things between two and three of your children. When it's one, it's a dead giveaway who broke it. Amen. So Cheyenne was expressing to us that it was not her. And uh, so her mom and I had a little talk with her about lying and about honesty and how that important it is and how Jesus doesn't like that. And uh, so we, uh, we let her go to her room and she was in there, oh, for just a few minutes. And, and she come out, she was just crying. Oh, daddy, oh, daddy. And she says, daddy, I'm a liar. <laughs> And uh, I just hugged her and I said, honey, no, you're, you, I said, honey, you're not a liar. I said, you told a lie, but you're not a liar. Amen. And uh, so uh, we had a nice long talk about that. And, and I got to honestly say, to the best of my knowledge, that's the only lie my daughter ever told me. And uh, believe it or not, you, you know, my mom, she still finds out things from my childhood once in a while and looks at me and says, well, I never knew that you did that. And I said, that was the whole point. And uh, I was talking with a friend of mine today, and we were talking about our kids, and I was sharing some things about my kids, and, and I told him, I said, well, <laughs> at least not that I know of, they haven't done any of those things. Not that I know of. And, uh, and that's okay. There are times ignorance is bliss. Amen. And uh, so anyways, but the, the point I want to make in the story is, listen, if you need to make change, the mistakes that you've made doesn't define who you are. My daughter was not a liar. She wasn't in the habit of being a liar. She told a lie. And so she repented. We move forward and we move past. Amen. Some of you need to repent, move forward and move past letting your mistake of the past define your future. Who you were and who you once were isn't really relevant to who you are or who you're going to be. So what we need to be doing, we put on the righteousness, the truth, and let the righteousness make change. Let it make change. Let the word come alive in you, move forward and make change. All right, once we get to there, we move on. And it says, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. <clears throat> you know, the gospel of peace is the message that all is well. It's the message that all is well. And in these times, that's an important message to understand, that all is well. Amen. When you listen to the news, they got everything to tell you except all is well. But all is well. All is well. We have been prepared with the gospel of peace. The word that says, my God will never leave you nor forsake you. The word that says that I'm above only and not beneath. The word that says, amen, that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So in these times, it's important to rely on the word, stand on the word, and stay in be in peace. And then it says, when we're moving on, and it says, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Our shield of faith is our steadfast assurance that God is with us. And the Bible says that when we're strong in our faith, we can quench all the fiery darts. It doesn't say most of the fiery darts. 
It doesn't say an occasional fiery dart. It doesn't say one dart a week and you're good. It says all the fiery darts. Amen. You see, when you read the word, you need to read all the word and understand what it all says. And it says all the fiery darts. So anything that Satan brings at you, anything that Satan brings to you, when your faith is strong, when your shield is up, God is able to defend. God is able to keep you at peace. God is able to move you past. But see, your faith has to keep your shield up. Fear is faith contaminated. And once you get into fear, you lower your shield. And once you lower your shield, now you've opened yourself up to Amen. And so let's keep our faith and our shield up, our faith and our shield up, standing on the word, believing the word, understanding the promises. And then it says, and take the helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the helmet of salvation is a protection on your head, your salvation. <clears throat> you see, the Bible says we can be assured of our salvation. And one of the tricks Satan likes to play on us is get us doubt who God is, how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, that we're really saved, that there's really a heaven, and that we're really going there. So with our helmet of salvation, our helmet protects your head, amen? And so in protecting your head, it's protecting your mind. Because your mind is a terrible thing. Your mind takes you to terrible places. Your mind will run amok if you won't catch it, watch it, and, you, and you'll let it. So in protecting your head, we're protecting your mind. And you protect your mind by keeping your thoughts on the Word. The Bible says whatever things are pure, whatever things are holy, whatever things to think on these things. The reason that we think on these things is because where your thoughts go, your attitude follows. Where your attitude follows, your actions go. And where your actions go is what will propel you either further in faith or further in fear. And so we need to make sure that we're, listen, that we're not just reading, we're not just hearing, we're not just speaking, but we're living what the Word says. Amen? And then the sword, it says, the sword, which is the Word of God, the sword, amen? <clears throat> the sword, the Word, that, that's our weapon. The Word is your weapon. It's your weapon to use against the devil. It's your weapon to use against fear and doubt. You see, the sword is your weapon. But, but we, we, we need to be careful because a sword in the wrong hands causes as much damage as it does good. And there's a lot of us that if we're not careful, we can use the word in the wrong way. And we use the word to attack people. We use the word to demean. We use the word to try to bring condemnation. And that's not what we should be using the word for. You should be using the Word to change your own life. You should be using the Word to make yourself better. You should be using the Word to make the world a better place because you were in it. Amen? Stop worrying so much about how the Word's working in somebody else's life, and let's focus how the Word's working in my life. How's the Word working for me? I need to use my sword for me in that respect. I need to use my sword to make me a better person. I need to use my sword to draw me closer to the Lord. I need to use my sword to keep me strong in the faith so I can keep my shield up in trying times, so I can keep my helmet lined up, keep my mind right, keep my focus right, keep moving forward in the way that God wants me to be so that I can be attracting people to Him and not to me. Amen? Amen. All right. And then it says, now listen, and praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Listen, we have to keep on keeping on. We have to keep moving forward. We have to keep pressing on. We have to keep making a difference. Keep making change. 
keep moving and keep understanding that, listen, although today, although today may have been a challenge, tomorrow's on its way. Although today we're struggling through a coronavirus, tomorrow is going to be a better day. Although today there's the uncertainty of the future in a lot of people's eyes, but the certainty is Jesus still loves you. The certainty is my God is still able. The certainty is, is that if I take this word and I start understanding and believing it as it says, and I start practicing the principles and using, and using my armor the way that I should, I'm putting on my belt, I'm putting on my breastplate, I got my boots on, shed, shod with the preparation of the gospel, I'm holding my shield up, my faith is high, I got my sword, my Bible, I spent some time in the Word, and I've understood what the Word says, and I've not allowed circumstance to deter me from the truth of the Word, and now I've spent my time in prayer. I've come before the throne, and I said, Father, forgive me. Father, use me. Father, I surrender all that I am to you. And as I'm moving and I'm working and I'm doing and I'm honoring the Lord and His Word through this, there's a supernatural peace that just moves over. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, not the peace as the world gives. Amen? And in these trying times, one of the greatest abilities and assets that we have as believers is the peace. It's the peace that understands that God is always here. It's the peace that understands no matter what it looks like today, tomorrow's a new day. It's the peace that understands that all is well. All is well. All is well. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God is still on the throne. God is still in control. He still loves you with a never-ending love. He's not left. He's not forsaken. We just need to stay focused, stay in faith, stay believing, be rooted and grounded in the Word. And my God is able. His grace is sufficient. And we're going to give Him all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we just thank you for this time to come into your house. Father, we thank you for your word. Now, Holy Spirit, right now we pray for our leaders in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for our president. We pray for our governors. We pray for our government down to the state, local, county, city levels. Holy Spirit, give them wisdom and discernment in Jesus' name. And Father, we come against now this coronavirus in the name of Jesus. Father, we bind this in the name of Jesus. We say, Satan, we command you to cease and desist in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, lead, guide, and protect. May your will and your work be done. Father, we love you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And all God's people said, amen, amen.